Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another Top 10 Comics Sold to Readers. Now, this is a little bit different. A Comic-Con that tells you what the comic shops are buying. This is the list that tells you what readers are leaving those comic shops with, preferably after buying them. Yep. After we talk about what uh, what's being sold in the hard copy area, we're going to go over to Comixology, world's largest digital comic book shop, and check out who wins the digital week. Now, this is a bleeding cool kind of thing, so take it with a grating salt if you have to. Now, these are the people who are participating. So, if you're in their area, stop by, say hi, maybe buy something, and remember, support your own local comic book shop. Now, without further ado, let's get this party started. Starting our countdown off at number 10, we've got Power Rangers Dracon New Dawn. Coming in at number 9 is Excalibur, number 11. In the number 8 spot, the Joker War continues with Nightwing, number 73. At number 7, we have the Avengers, number 35. In the number 6 spot, it's good to see that people other than me were duped into buying Harley Quinn, number 75. Coming in at number 5 is Wolverine, number 4. In the number 4 slot, we have Maestro, number 1. At number 3 is Thor, number 6. Coming in at the runner-up position in number two is Death Metal Guidebook. And the number one book of the week is Batman number 97, The Joker War Sells. So, I guess it is a dubious win for Marvel. I mean, they do have the numbers. It's five Marvel, four DC, and one independent. So, by what I usually track, the winners and losers of this, they won. But DC did get number one and number two with Batman and the Death uh, the Death Metal Handbook. So, okay, they put up a show. They put up a fight, but I got to admit, as a DC fan, they still lost the, the, the hard copy countdown. So let's find out what the comic book shops have to say about this, and then we're going to go over to Comixology and find out if DC may have won the digital countdown. We'll see. Probably not. There's a lot of empire, so we'll find out. Famous Faces and Funny says, Big week for Marvel at FFF this week, with half of our weekly bestseller list being from the House of Ideas. Batman still took the top spot in our list, as he usually does. But Donny Cates' big Thor issue was only outsold by two copies. Thor was the big book of the week, but Maestro also had a great first week. The Bennett cover was especially popular. Wolverine and Cable also had a good week. Empire X-Men and Captain Marvel also hit the top 10, with Captain Marvel at the bottom spot. We have a handful of people who are getting every Empire tie-in issue, and I'm sure they're all happy that Marvel took a serious axe to the intended tie-ins. Speaking of tie-ins... The Death Metal Guidebook and Nightwing both sold well this week. Once in Future was the Indie Book of the Week. Between that and whatever new creator-owned series they put out on a given week, we're almost guaranteed to have a Boom Studios book in our top 10. It's nice to see a smaller publisher blow up like Boom has been and really see what these creators can do with their own stories. Yeah, Boom Studios, is, uh, it's putting out some great stuff. I actually do like Once in Future. I do recommend that book as uh, well as the others I'm thinking, okay, yeah, the Joker War, man, I'm glad to see Nightwing's doing well. I actually praised that book in a review I just did recently, and uh, I, but I still want to see the Joker War focus. Now, I have digitally, I have all the Empire, but I honestly, I've only read one issue, so maybe somewhere down the line, I'll actually be able to do a review, but my goodness gracious, I didn't think the first one was good, so I never continued. Sailfish Comics, Batman owned the week, but Thor came close to selling the same numbers as of uh, writing this. We have zero copies of any issue of Donny Cates' Thor for the shelf. Maestro made a strong debut this week. The Metal Guidebook sold great as metal is now in the upswing after a decent but not spectacular launch for us. Another book that sells that I'm not particularly into is the uh, dark metal stuff. Please, by all means, let me know in the comments below why you like it. I don't get it, but I would love to hear what's great about it from somebody who actually likes it. The only thing I really liked were the uh, tie-in issues, you know, the uh, Batman who, who laughs, the uh, grim Batman, you know, the Punisher one, and the, the Cyborg one, and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let me know what you like in the, uh, in the comments below. Collector Paradise Pasadena, Batman and other Jerk War tie-ins did amazing numbers. Maestro debuted okay, but not as good as we hoped. Power Rangers franchise is much rejuvenated with a new storyline. Vault is the new Boom Studios with amazing new books that like uh, Let Them Bleed. 
and new shadow service. Decorum has not shed a sub yet. It's the most stable book besides Adventure Man. This next week will be ridiculous with the three Jokers. Okay, I read the three Jokers. You're going to get a review probably in about six hours from the, uh, st- the time I recorded this. I am getting off of this. I'm immediately doing a review with the three Jokers, and I am so excited, dude. Seriously. Spoiler alert, I liked it. But with that being said, it's time to go on over to Comixology, the world's largest digital comic book shop, and find out who wins the week. Is it Marvel? Is it DC? Or will an independent... You know it's never an independent comic. You know this. I do this thing all the time. Hey, is it Marvel? Is DC? Could be independent. You never know. You do know, don't you? It's not going to be an independent. It just isn't. We know this. Not saying there aren't great ones out there. It's just uh, people don't buy the independent comics as much. So anyway, let's go on over to Comixology and do their countdown as well. At number 10, we have the Justice League number 51. Coming in at number 9 is the Death Metal Guidebook. In the number 8 spot, we have Injustice Year Zero number 4. At number 7, Marvel finally makes an appearance with Cable number 3. At number 6, we have The Avengers, number 35. In 5th place, we have Empire X-Men, number 4. Coming in at number 4 is Wolverine, number 4. At number 3, we have Excalibur, number 11. And the runner-up at number 2 is Thor, number 6. But no way is Batman, number 97, relinquishing that number 1 spot. Okay, so that hurt a little as a DC fan. Uh, Batman is still number one. Got that. Okay, fine. Uh, DC didn't gain anything digitally, so they still had four. But three of them were at the very end of the countdown at the very bottom. Uh, Batman, of course, at number one. Otherwise, Marvel just kicked their butts. But I do this, I do, and even when Marvel was losing every week, I did this. So just to be fair, I'm going to expand it to see who wins the week, all the way to number 20. Usually, Marvel owns that back half as well, so I am expecting full-on slaughter. I'm thinking maybe by number 16, this thing is over with. All right, let's find out. At number 11, we have Nightwing number 73. It's now 6 to 5 in Marvel's favor. At number 12, we have Maestro number 1. It's now 7 to 5 in Marvel's favor. Coming in at 13 is Captain Marvel number 20. It is now 8 to 5 in Marvel's favor. In the number 14 spot is Captain America 22, 9 to 5, Marvel's favor. Here's number 15, Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 4. It's 10 to 5, Marvel's favor. Can DC even tie it? Okay, so I was wrong. Wonder Woman Annual number 4 kept DC alive. It is now 10 to 6 in Marvel's favor. Had I said it would be over at 17, I would have been correct. Here we have once in future number 10. It's now 10 to 6 to 1. There's no way DC can even tie. Marvel wins. At 18, we have Wonder Woman Dead Earth number 4. It is now 10 to 7. Marvel's favor. At number 19, we have Harley Quinn, black and white and red. Number 9, it is now 10 to 8 in Marvel's favor. And at number 20, we have Aquaman, number 62. It's 10 to 9, Marvel's favor. They win the week. Okay, fine, I get it. I I accept that, but at least DC didn't go out like a punk, and they still had the number one spot for the week. Whatever. Look, I understand. I, 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 look, I treat this as a sports thing. I don't even look ahead. I truly made that prediction that it was going to be for uh, by, by the end of 16 because I don't like to look ahead in the countdown. I really don't. I mean, I add the pictures. I don't bother counting. I'm like, click, click, click. I mean, you get a sense. You get a sense. If I'm putting on more Marvel, but I really try not to pay attention. So when I'm counting it down, it's as fresh as possible because I like this part. I really do treat it like, hey, my team's winning, you know, that kind of thing. But, okay, it's a Marvel win. It's a Marvel win. That's the way it's going to be. I get it. Guys, you got to get out there and buy more DC. Telling you. Teen Titans was, uh, what was it? No, it was uh, 
the Swordsman, Lord of Empire, or something like that. That was it, number 21. I do believe Teen Titans was number 22. Spider Woman was 23. And then uh, Gideon Falls was number 24. So DC was losing this one, no matter so what you're going to do. Anyway, let me know what you think about this countdown in the comments below. What was missing that should be on this countdown? And what is on this countdown that shouldn't be? Let me know that as well. Uh, make sure you're clicking on one of the videos that are popping up somewhere around here. You, know, you might like that one also. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, this is where we're trying to make a living. Go on over to Patreon. Go on over to Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on. Help us keep making videos for you. Help me help you. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.